Do you want to achieve financial freedom and fast? Stick with me. Hey, before we get into this, I just want to say I'm here in my office building on a Saturday. There's a handful of real estate offices, there's a builder, there's insurance companies, there's a lot of companies in this office building. And I can tell you, let me show you at the window over here. Not one car. Not one car here. Now, I'm not saying that nobody's working this weekend on this beautiful Saturday. I should probably be out at the beach, but you got to sacrifice. You got to sacrifice your time, your time that you, you want to be out spending it with family and friends. If you sacrifice now, you're going to have a lot more free time. You're going to have a lot more money. We're going to go into detail exactly how you can create financial freedom quickly. So look, everybody has this preconceived notion that they want to be a millionaire or they want to be rich. And I, I, for a minute, I want you to think a little bit differently. I want, to, I want you to think about financial freedom. Now, you might not know necessarily what that means, but look, you don't have to be rich and a millionaire to, to enjoy life and to have freedom. So what exactly is financial freedom? It's really simple. It's basically your assets are covering your liabilities, okay? So your assets is anything that's passive money that comes in. For example, like a duplex. Let's say you bought a duplex, or let's say you bought two duplexes. And let's say your personal overhead, this is your, you know, the cost of living, your, your house, your car, your insurances, your food, your gas, all that kind of stuff. Let's say the cost of living is $3,500 a month aggressively paid down those duplexes and uh, now they're free and clear so that's four doors the duplex is two units and let's say you bought two duplexes total four doors let's say that every door netted you a thousand dollars a month after all costs after uh, real estate taxes insurance management maintenance deferred maintenance all that kind of stuff now you have four thousand dollars left over, or four thousand dollars net from those four doors and your cost of living is thirty five hundred dollars so your passive income is covering you know your assets are covering your personal liability which is thirty five hundred so four thousand minus thirty five hundred actually leaves you five hundred dollars left over so that is true financial freedom when your assets cover your liabilities so forget about the notion of uh, being a millionaire and, and being rich because you know what a lot of people they don't know what to do with money you know they 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 some people do make a lot of money but they blow through it they don't know how to invest their money so i really want you to start thinking a little differently start thinking about you know investing into assets not liabilities in the beginning why is financial freedom so important to me and and me getting this message out uh, a couple things because i think you know our schools have failed us many times our families have failed us because they were never educated about money and uh, you know sometimes it's forbidden to talk about money or whatever the case is but money is just a tool and i think that because we have a lack of knowledge about money i want to make sure that um, I'm sharing my personal experiences on my path, how I got to financial freedom. And, um, you know, it's important to me. I don't care about being a multimillionaire or any of that kind of stuff. What's important to me is making sure that I have the freedom of time. Okay, time is something that's so important. And, and you know, it's, uh, it's not really talked about too much. It's finite. At the end of the day, you only have so many hours, so many minutes, so many days, so many months, so many weeks, so many years before you, you croak and you're dead, you're done. So think of financial freedom more as the freedom of time. Because when you are able to create financial freedom for yourself and your family, and, and stick with me because it's easier than you think, when you're able to do this, then you're able to have more time to spend with your friends and family. Now you're able to spend more time out on the beach or fishing or hiking in the mountains or traveling or going to your kids' recitals. Whatever it is, whatever you love to do, financial freedom will allow you that free time to do that, to spend with your family and your loved ones and so forth. Um, I can tell you, I've seen so many people, unfortunately, that 
you know, they're, they're working their tails off and they're in a job Monday through Friday and, you know, out the door at 6 a.m. and not getting home until 6, 7 o'clock at night and not spending time with their family. All right, so what I want you to do right now, this is super simple, pause this after this. Grab a piece of paper and a pen. If you're, if you're with your significant other, you guys can do this together, but it's really, really simple. It's gonna take maybe 10, 15 minutes. But literally write down every expense that you have. Now, if you're in business for yourself, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about personal expenses. Write them all down. Write down the uh, monthly debt, whatever the, the monthly is on you know, your, your credit card, your cell phone, your car payment, your mortgage, your insurance, your health insurance, your lawn maintenance, your pool maintenance, your second car, maybe your boat payment, whatever it is. Make it a big list, okay? This is where you're gonna confront it all, okay? And this is where, um, this is where I had to change, and this is where my life changed because I was able to write out this list and figure out, especially when our real estate market crashed in 2008, we had to get super lean. So what we did was wrote out all of our expenses, try to figure out exactly what we could eliminate, and that's what I want you to do. I want you to write out all these expenses and figure out what you're willing to sacrifice. If you guys sacrifice today, your future, six months, 10 months, 24 months, is gonna be so much brighter. So go through this list, all right? Now pause this, write it out. All right, hopefully you paused it and wrote out this entire list. Now what I want you to do is go line by line through this list and, and have your significant other, unless it's just, if you're single, then just this is a, a one person task. Go through this list and figure out what you can eliminate. For example, let's say uh, you, you did something stupid and you bought a car and you got a crazy car payment. Can you eliminate that car? Can you eliminate that car payment? Can you guys sell that car? Let's say it's a $400 a month payment. Can you sell that car, sacrifice in the short term, hopefully you break even on that sale and take cash and buy something that's, you know, that can get you around. Um, that's reliable, can get you from point A to point B, maybe you got a few bucks saved and you can pay cash for a car. If you can do that, great. Car payments are only gonna hurt you. Um, if you have a boat, I mean, if you're financing a boat, then you know this is exactly the stuff that we need to eliminate right now. Sacrifice now because I can tell you in the future, you're gonna pay cash for boats because your assets are gonna pay for your boats. You're gonna pay cash for your wave runners, for your lakefront property, for your beach property, and so forth. Sacrifice now. Don't worry about what the neighbors are thinking when you went from a, a nice six series BMW to a Kia whatever. I don't care. Don't worry about keeping up with the Joneses because at the end of the day, all your neighbors to the left and right all over the place, they might have beautiful things, but they're leveraged up to the gills as well. So it's important for you guys to understand that um, don't, don't worry about what other people think. So go back to this, this list and figure out what you can eliminate. Let's say you have a big house payment. Can you flip that house? Can you reduce the size of your house? Um, I did when the market crashed. I had a nice waterfront, Gulf Access condo, uh, downtown Fort Myers. Wound up eliminating that debt, got rid of that, and I wound up um, you know, living in my office for about three months and uh, worked out other scenarios where I kept my per personal expenses so damn low. And, um, and then I got back into the real estate market in terms of buying again when the market crashed out and I wound up buying a condo for $21,000 cash. But I had to sacrifice. I sacrificed, I sold my boat, I sold my condo, I sacrificed. But, you know, when I sacrificed and did that, it put me on the track to financial freedom so quickly because I was able to eliminate all the personal o overhead debt that was just crushing me. It was crushing me and again, I didn't really know what I was doing with uh, debt and money and so forth. And this is another reason why I'm making this video. Uh, back to the house, who knows, you might be able to even flip the house. Maybe you got some equity in it, some good equity. You might be able to take that equity, pay cash for a small condo. You know, in the beginning, your family is going to be like, what the heck? Your kids might have to bunk up in one room instead of two rooms uh, with two family rooms. Whatever the case is, minimize that expense. Um, the, the quicker you minimize, the more cash flow you're going to have in your pocket at the end of the day, every single day that you're going to be able to take and put into cash flow investments like duplexes or whatever. Now you might be saying, look, I, I, um, 
I, I'm pretty lean right now, I just don't make a lot of money. Okay. That's fine, I get it. But well, what's your work schedule right now? Do you have weekends? Do you have a Sunday that you can go and do a little side hustle? There's plenty of side hustles out there for you guys. I actually have a link that I'm gonna provide to you guys as well. Um, it's primarily more for side hustles in the real estate industry, but there's a ton of them. Let's say on any given Sunday, you're able to create a side hustle that uh, generate $500 per day, per Sunday, say $2,000 a month in additional revenue to you and your family. Now, if you're responsible with that money, that excess money that you didn't have before, but you created, you take that money and you put it in an account and you forget about it. You do not touch that money because that money is strictly for building up your asset column. Now, you also might be saying, Steve, I've got a bunch of debt. Okay, I got three credit cards, I got the car, this and that. So we already talked about the car, trying to eliminate the car payment, uh, as well as house, you know, can you, can you reduce the size of the house? Can you sell the house? If you're renting a property, can you move out, rent something else that's more affordable? Um, and I see this all the time with people buying houses, you know, they get, they get approved for 250 grand, what do they buy? They buy a $250,000 property because they're approved for it. It's, it's crazy, they're house poor. They, they put all their money into their mortgage and um, they, they're not able to take one vacation a year. It's insane. So, um, you know, if you're, if you're in a debt position, let's say you have credit card debt, okay? A real simple example, let's say you have three credit cards. What you wanna do is you wanna do minimum payment on two credit cards and then the, the third credit card, you wanna do as much as you're comfortably paying over the minimum payment to knock down principal. Okay, so let's say it's $500 more that's going uh, to eliminate that first credit card debt. So you're paying $500 a month and finally you get that first credit card uh, eliminated. Then what you're gonna do, once that's eliminated, let's say there's $3,000 worth of debt in a handful of months, let's say four or five months, you got rid of that credit card. Now you're still used to paying the $500 plus the minimum payment, let's say it's 100, so $600 on that card you're gonna take $600 and now put it on that second card. So the second card that you've been paying minimum payment on, you're, you're gonna have the minimum payment, say $100 plus $600, so you have $700 going to that card. Okay, and you're gonna do that until that card is paid off. And then you're gonna take that $700 and you're gonna put it on the third card. Let's say you're paying $100 a month on that third card for minimum payment. You have 700 plus another 100, that's $800. And you're gonna put it on that third card until you're completely out of debt on that third card. If you have credit card debt and you're not paying, you're in default for whatever reason, a lot of times you can negotiate a debt settlement. Uh, you can negotiate pennies on the dollar in some cases. So whatever you do, your, your financial picture, you guys can work on it. I've, I've worked with a lot of home buyers and sellers that have been in really, really bad situations, a lot of credit card debt, a lot of uh, luxury debt and everything else. And I can tell you with the, the right plan of action and discipline um, and some side hustles to make additional money, you can get out of this debt position. Now, once you're out of this debt position, you're used to paying say eight, nine hundred, a thousand dollars a month in credit card debt. You got your side hustle as well of 2,000 plus your, the, the credit card debt that you're used to paying. So you're talking three, let's say it's $3,000 additional per month. Now you're taking that and you're putting all that into the separate account that's gonna buy assets for you. And the whole goal there is to just keep stacking money so you can buy the necessary assets that's gonna co uh, cover all of your personal overhead. So what's your hurdle? What, what's stopping you from uh, achieving financial freedom if you're not there yet? Comment below, I'd like to hear about it. As time progresses, I'm gonna go into more detail on this kind of stuff because I, I know it's, uh, it's pretty deep in, in terms of uh, restructuring kind of your mindset to start thinking like this. Um, it does, it takes a lot of time, effort, and energy to really start changing your focus, changing your mindset. So I'm gonna have more, more uh, conversations about financial freedom and how to get out of debt and so forth. Um, as always, if you got one good thing out of this video, go ahead and like it, subscribe to this channel, and I appreciate the support. See ya.